Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to play another training game today. Uh, after what happened yesterday, uh, and thank you for, for all the comments, I've decided to change the majority of my training routine and focus on tactics, as you may have seen uh, in yesterday's game. I just need to work on that the most. Okay, so I went for a custom challenge to get a higher rated opponent. I got somebody rated 2200, which is good. Let's just hope he wants to play a game. He says hello, hi, good luck. Great, we have a game. Okay, so e4, e5, knight f3. Uh, so basically what happened yesterday, I just missed uh, that after queen h5, he can play g6, winning a piece. And uh, that was such a, such a simple tactical blunder that I kind of got... Uh, discouraged and I decided to to just do tactics as much as I can. Let me just figure out what I want to do here. I don't want to go for the Deutz Gambit with castles. I'm going to play c3, go for a position with Gioco Piano. Let's see what happens. Knight f6, d3. Castles or d6. Now uh, d6, I'm going to castle. Knight a5 is not a threat yet because I have bishop b5 check, bishop a4 and bishop c2. Uh, I still have to decide whether I want to go for b4 or or something else. Okay, so now knight a5 is a threat. Uh, uh, b4, he will retreat his bishop. Uh, bishop b3 is the most common move here. So I'm just going to go for that. Uh, I'm going to play a positional game. Okay, uh, knight b to d2. He will castle, I will play rook e1. Maybe I will play h3. Uh, okay, so h3 stops bishop g4 and knight g4. Then rook e1 is easier to play. So I'm just going to play h3. Uh, these are all very common uh, and thematic patterns in the Gioco Piano. My next plan is rook e1 knight f1 and knight e3 or knight g3. I think in this case I'm going to play bishop e3 first, where as he, if he takes I'm going to recapture with the pawn and then put my knight on g3. Uh, he can now decide to play bishop e6, uh, which I'm not going to capture. I'm going to play rook e1 and then if he takes my bishop I will have developed my queen for free. Uh, the one thing that always has to be a concern here for both players is whether white can play d4 or whether black can push through with d5. He goes for the control of, of f4, so his next move is going to be knight g6 and knight f4. Uh, so yeah, as I said, uh, I'm going to focus on tactics in my training. Uh, I have started three new books on tactics and uh, for now closed the two other books I was reading uh, and I'm going to be doing online tactics and tactics from three books and that's going to be my entire training routine uh, until December. Okay, so rookie one, uh, that should be a normal move. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time thinking. Maybe I had d4 here already. But I feel more confident when I play rook e1 first, so that e4 is not a threat. Uh, now knight f1 needs to be played uh, to meet knight f4 with bishop takes f4. And my, my knight is going to go either to g3 or to e3 next turn. Uh, probably g3, because I don't want to put it on e3, because then f4 is not protected enough. Very positional and thematic game. We are still in, not in theory. We are still in theory, and you can achieve this position by via tons of different move orders. But we are still in thematic territory, so we don't spend too much time on our moves. So I'm trying to reach 2100 on Leeches Classical by the end of November. 29 points to go. Uh, yesterday's defeat uh, and 11 points I lost were kind of put a dent into my rating but let's hope uh, I improve that today now 
Now the thing is, if he plays knight h5, uh, trying to play both of his knights into f4, I'm going to play d4, and I thought if rook e8, I can just go knight g3, uh, stopping knight h5, and then eventually uh, threaten the move knight g5, where he would have to play rook e7. So I'm, for now I'm just going to play knight g3, uh, I want to stop knight h5, any expansion there. I don't want him to double threaten uh, the f4 square, and also now my e4 pawn is reinforced, so when I play d4 it's going to be more powerful. Uh, So, I mean, you could argue that the position is equal, but uh, I would say that uh, my position is slightly better than his because uh, my my c1 bishop is more useful than his uh, than his. I wanted to say c8 bishop. So now I can choose to trade it off or not trade it off. Uh, the thing is, if I play knight g5 now, he will be forced to trade his bishop off. And then I will have a tempo for knight f5 and also a tempo on the b7 pawn. So knight g5, bishop takes b3, queen takes b3, attacks f7, threatens knight f5 and attacks b7. So I don't see anything wrong with this move. I think this should be by far the best move. And he doesn't have a trick with bishop takes f2 because after king takes f2, knight takes e4. Firstly, I can take the knight. Secondly, my knight is protected by the bishop. So now I think I should already be much better because after uh, after bishop takes bishop, and if he doesn't take, if he moves the bishop away, then I just win f7 in the exchange. If he moves, if he takes my bishop, queen b3 attacks f7, attacks b7, and threatens knight f5. So I think his opening had gone wrong at this stage i think bishop e6 is a huge mistake well if he wants to give his bishop away then fine uh, still how does he defend both pawns so bishop takes e6 f takes e6 queen to b3 he can go queen d7 But what if I just go knight f5 now? Or should I just grab the bishop pair when I have the chance? So the two moves I'm considering are knight takes e6 and after f takes e6 to play d4 where I would have the bishop pair in a very pleasant position. Uh, the second move I'm considering is bishop takes e6, and after, e ta after f takes e6, queen b3, but then queen d7 defends both weaknesses. And the last move I'm considering is knight f5, where I'm not uh, really allowing him to strengthen the f5 square. And I'm using my knight there, which if he takes with the bishop, I have e takes f5, tempo on the knight, and winning f7. If he plays h6, uh, I would probably move uh, my... I would probably move my g knight back to f3. Is there a stronger move? Can I play d4 right away? d4 is very thematic. So d4, e takes d4, um, c takes d4. I have a broad center, a better pawn structure. If he does nothing, I can then go d5 c takes d5 uh, and no i can't go d5 so d4 if he does nothing i can't push d5 
I have a feeling this is a critical position. So, okay, let's go back to the candidate moves. Bishop e6, f6, queen b3, queen d7 is the only move that defends both pawns. Uh, and then I don't have a way to make easy progress. Knight takes e6, f takes e6 would pin the pawn. But then I don't have the f5 square. And bishop e3 would provoke him to take. I would take with my rook. And I sort of like that. So bishop e3 seems like a good move because I'm trading off my bad piece for his good piece. Unless he plays c5, where I, I don't think he should play c5. So bishop e3, bishop takes, rook takes, getting my rook into play, but weakening f4. Do I really want to weaken f4? Bishop takes, bishop takes, f takes, strengthens f4, and I have rook f1, which is a strong attacking move. So I think I want to get rid of that bishop. I don't, I don't like the weakness on my f2 square. I think everything else can wait. And of course, if he if he does nothing, if he allows me to take on a7, then his rook will have been misplaced. And I will probably push d4 right away. I spent a lot of time here, but I don't think my original ideas of knight f5, knight e6, or bishop e6 worked. I think I needed to improve my position. And now I, I made my bishop better, and his bishop is sort of blunted. And I, yeah, I needed to develop my last piece. Okay, so I take with the pawn, of course, strengthen, strengthening d4 uh, and stopping knight f4. Now rook f1 seems a bit silly to play rook, f, rook e1 and then rook back to f1, but now he would have to play queen d7 again because I take with the queen, attacking b7, attacking f7. I don't think he can take on e4. Yeah, okay, so that's as planned. Now his next move is going to be uh, h6, probably. So I think I just want to plant my knight on f5. Uh, for the time being, strengthen my position. I'm not really sure f uh, d4 is the move I want to play anymore. Uh, I sort of like my chances with my knight on f5, especially after he plays h6. That knight is going to be there permanently. Now I'm also threatening uh, queen takes f7, queen takes f7, knight takes f7, king takes f7, knight takes d6 check. King moves, I take the exchange. So in giving, giving up two knights for a rook and two pawns, which I think is a very favorable trade, he would have uh, a weak isolated e5 pawn. Uh, so that's seven points of material for six points of material. I don't really know if I should go for that, but it's definitely tempting. If he plays h6, Knight f7, queen f7, queen f7, king f7, knight d6 check, let's say king f8, uh, or king f7, knight takes e6, rook takes e6. He has two knights on g6 and f6, and the rook on e8, I have a rook on e1 and the rook on a1, and I have two extra pawns. So worst case scenario, I think that should be a draw. Uh, but then on the other hand, if he plays h6 and I, I just retreat my knight, is that position better or worse? Because for now my... Okay, he defends d6. Okay, so stops the threat. Uh, I need a way forward here. <clears throat> so 
So I don't think I'm going to play, be playing d4 because that weakens my e4 pawn. If he plays d5, I would be happy to take and when he recaptures to play d4. Uh, but then the question is, where do I want my rooks to be? f1 and f2 or d1 and d1? I think the correct answer is f1 and f2. When he plays h6, I'm going to play knight f3. And my knight is going to be coming to d2 and c4. Or it's going to go to h4 to trade off the g6 knight. So I, I think I want to keep things flexible with rook e2 for now. Uh, because rook e2 seems like a useful move, both threatening to, to double my rooks and also getting my other rook to f1. But after rook f2, d5, e d5, c d5, uh, d4, after e d4, I would be forced to take c d4 instead of e d4 because my rook on e2 is hanging. Could also take with the knight, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, then on the other hand, I don't have to play d4. So d5, e d5, uh, c d5, I can just go rook e1. So I'm going to do that. This seems like the most active move. Just getting my pieces into play. I don't think d5 is ever a threat by him uh, for as long as I I have my pawn on e4. Now the question is just do I want my rooks on e1, e2 or f1, f2? That's why I think rook e2 was a very flexible move. Not really giving my cards away and preparing several doubling combinations. Okay. Knight f3 has to be played. The thing with h6 chasing away the g5 knight is now my f5 knight is going to be there forever unless he exchanges his uh, g6 knight by playing knight e7 which he can do but i think i'm just going to leave my knight there okay d5 now well that's fun uh so this i have to take i guess it's okay take and double my pawns and I have to take. Takes with the C pawn. Now I don't have D4 because my rook is hanging. Does he have E4 or D4? I don't think he does. So I'm just going to I'm just going to play rook to E1. So if I go rook e1 and he plays e4, I would have to go takes, d takes, and knight to d4. And if I play rook d1, takes, d takes, knight d4, so okay, should I go e4? e4, d takes, d takes. Does he have an easy way to double attack me? I don't think so. If I go d4, he goes e4. And my position is busted because I have to move my good knight and I don't have a square to move it to. If I go rook d1 and he goes d4, uh, I just take once with the c pawn, take the second time with the knight, so no problem. If I go rook d1 and he goes e4, I can take once, and if he takes with the knight, no, then I can just go rook, knight to d4 without taking. So I think that's fine. So I'm just going to go rook to d1. Getting my final piece into play.
I'm wondering about the position after in which I played bishop e3 when he took, where I had the option of playing knight e6, bishop e6, and queen b3. Maybe bishop e3 was imprecise. But then I wouldn't have knight f5, which is a huge downside. So I would really like to play e4 here. I'm sorry, d4. Uh, but he plays e4. So in the event of him playing knight e7, I will gladly take that knight off the board. And when he plays e4, play knight e5. And then I will play c4 as my pawn break at some point. I'm down on time, two minutes down, that's not good, but I think uh, the most complicated part of the game is done because usually in the in the Gioco Piano where these central pushes happen, then that's those are the critical positions. Maybe rookie 2 was also a mistake. Maybe I should have played either d4 or e4. Maybe knight g3 and e4 is a good plan. Because Meruki is defended. So knight g3, and if he plays e4, I take. And once again, I have knight d4, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, knight g3, e4 takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, rook d1, queen d1, rook d8, queen d2, uh, rook d2. And it should be an equal position. So I like the plan of knight g3 and d4. Okay, uh, he plays e4 now. So at this point, I think I'm just going to play knight to d4 and let him take if he wishes to take. Because I don't really want to allow his knight uh, in my position. So I'm sure he's going to take with the knight if I... If I take, but if I go knight d4 and he takes, I take with the rook. He plays knight e4 anyway, and then it's hard to play knight g3. But do I play? Do I play takes first? Because I think he has to take with the pawn. So do I want to open up the d-file or not? Do I want to leave the weakness on d5? I think if I don't take and he takes, then he has a weak d5 pawn, which could be easy to exploit. And if he takes uh, and I take with the rook, he takes with the knight, I always have the option of playing e4. So knight d4 seems better. I, I have to be honest, I don't like my position. I think he's better here, but how much better I wouldn't be able to say.
I mean, my knights should be better than his. His rooks are better than mine. His center is better than mine. Queens are probably equal. Uh, okay, so now he's threatening. Oh, so now he's going to take with the pawn. That's a very good idea. Okay. Takes with the pawn and jumps into d3. Makes a lot of sense. But I have to take. I don't have another option. If he takes with the knight, I would be sort of happy. I think taking with the pawn is much better. Because if he does take with the knight, I'm going to play rook f1. Uh, I'm sorry, rook f2. And then if knight g3, rook f3. Just have to be careful not to hang knight d2, forking my rooks, or knight g3, forking my rooks. If he takes with the knight and I play rook f2, I will be threatening knight h6 check, gh6 and rook takes f6, winning a pawn. Or if, if he takes with the pawn, I can do the same thing. Maybe I'm not worse, I don't know. Now I'm a minute up on time, which I'm happy about. It's an extremely complicated position now, so time is going to be very significant. Knight takes, I think, is correct. Yeah, and what was I thinking? Rook f2. I can't go rook f2. Uh, and he also now moved the knight away from the attack. So rook f1. Uh, rook f1. I'm guarding g3 with my knight. But if he plays g6, I would have to go knight takes h6 check. And after king h7, I'm still hanging an exchange. So... So what now? His knight is a very good piece. So will it pay off to give up an exchange? Because I doubt it. I don't think it will. I can't go king h2 because I lose, because the queen is in c6. I would love to play knight g3, but it's illegal. Oh, is it a good idea to play knight f3 here? Knight f3, knight f3, gf3, moving the knight away from e4 seems very strong sort of like that I'm just preparing to double my rooks go in for an attack I'm going to play it I like it I like it because if I can get his knight away from from e4 while my knight is still on f5 that seems great and I can also if he does nothing I can just go my f5 knight to d4 so that's why queen d7 and stuff like that won't really work. I 
I think knight f3 is a very tricky move because with, with knight g5 he would double attack my f3 pawn and my h3 pawn, but I would go rook g1. He takes either of them, rook g7 check. Okay, he declines this trade. Uh, threatens to play knight g3. So what if I just go knight from f3 to d2? No, that loses the exchange, what am I talking about? But I like rook f1. Finally improving my piece. So rook f1. His knights are now much better than mine. Rook f1, if he plays g6, I take. If he plays queen d7, I can defend. Okay, I like rook f1. I'm not sure if that's the correct move, but... So, so now g6, I don't think, works. Oh, maybe it does. Crap. Maybe g6 does work. Maybe I just blundered an exchange. Maybe I should not have done this. So g6, knight h6, check, king h7. Yeah, I lost the exchange. Maybe I have compensation with knight g4. And it's a tricky move with four minutes on the clock. Okay, he stops that. Now I need to stop knight g3. I don't really want to just bring my bring my rook back. That would be passive. Although I may just have to do it. <sighs> Which means that rook f1 was a bad move. Okay, so I just need to go back. I made a mistake, I need to admit it, and that's it. Although I think he could have played g6 right away. I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Just go knight h4. Knight h4, knight g3, rook e1, or rook c2. Okay, I'm going to go knight d4, seems safer. Yeah, knight g3. Knight g3, I lose my e3 pawn. Oh. Yeah, I messed up. Knight g3, I lose my e3 pawn. Maybe it's not over.
Yeah, just knight g3, rook e2, rook takes e3. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. I have some pressure here with my queen indirectly and here, but I don't think that's enough. I think he should just take with the rook. Yeah, I have to take. And I guess I have to play rook to e1. And he's going to play something, probably rook to e8. But then I'm going to go king to f2. So I wouldn't say it's over just yet. So if he plays knight e4, I'm going to be in trouble. So I better take the one knight and and then do something because allowing knight e4 would be deadly. So I'm just going to take once. He takes uh, now. How do I improve my position? I'm stopping rook e8. Uh, I want to threaten. I want to threaten. What do I want to threaten? Maybe rook e5? Rook e5 seems like a threat. He has queen b6, queen c5. I don't think those are too deadly. If I go knight d4, he's going to play queen c5, pinning my knight. But then I can take on b7. So knight d4 takes takes. Uh, gives us an equal position, but he has quite a few more weaknesses. So I like knight d4. Knight d4 takes takes. I have pressure on b7. I can go queen b4, threaten uh, rook e7. So I like that. And I want to get rid of his knight. I'm also fix fixing the isolated uh, d5 pawn that he has. So maybe he should go knight back to g3 now to threaten knight e4. But yeah, I'm not sure what I do in that case. Probably just rook f1 after he plays knight e4. I'm not giving up my exchange. I don't know. This is a tricky game. I'm a pawn down, but I wouldn't say I'm, I'm lost. I think he's better. I don't know by how much. takes I'm happy to see that because now he doesn't have a way to challenge the e-file yet and I'm threatening d5 f7 
and b7. So if you play something like b5, then queen to b4 would force rook to d7, and then I would have more activity than him. So I'm kind of confident in my ability to win or draw this game now. He has far more weaknesses than me. He is a pawn up, but he has three weaknesses. Okay, so he wants to play rook e8. He wants to play rook e8. And then if I leave my queen on b3, I can take on d5. Uh, if I play queen b4 now, then I take on b7. So queen b4, rook e8, rook e8, queen e8, queen b7, queen e1 check, king h2. He doesn't have any more checks. So I'm going to play queen b4 to take on b7 instead of on on, on d5 and he's playing with 24 seconds so this should be easier for me to play and if he doesn't play rook e8 I'm going to play rook e7 and he's lost The great thing my d4 pawn is doing, it's stopping uh, queen to e5 check. And now I'm double attacking two pawns, and if he moves the queen, I'm attacking f7. So I have to be better here. He has too many weaknesses. I went to h1 because if he if he checks on e1 he doesn't have any more checks and if he takes on d4 I take on f7 with check Ah uh, he found a way to draw uh. He found a way to draw I missed that okay good game I'm going to offer a draw. I, th I think I had a win there. Good game, good game, bye. Uh, I think I had a win there. Okay, let's analyze the game without an engine first. Okay. I think I had a win. So let's go to the first critical position after c6 where I played bishop e3. Uh, okay, so knight e6, f6. I don't think I have that much because this pawn is going to be forever protected and support d5. So I don't think that works. Bishop e6, f6 again. I don't think I have that much because this pawn is supporting d5 and my knight is about to get evicted and I don't have knight f5. So. I don't believe in those two moves. 
What else could I have played? Knight a5 immediately was my move. Where if he takes, takes, I just win. So I don't think this is a viable option because I take here. But then on the other hand, well, I don't see what he does here. So let's just turn on the engine after knight f5. It's equal with the immediate d5. The best move is bishop takes e6. Knight takes e6. Second best, bishop takes e6, and my move. My move is a mistake. Okay. Takes. Takes. Yeah, okay. And then as the position went on. Wow, okay, so black is actually much better here. Yeah, okay, so. Black is better as I had assumed. Yeah, he has much better knights. Wow, he was actually minus four. Yeah, immediate g6 was also good. Wow, okay, he was killing me. So what went wrong for him? I think knight d4 was a good move and I think he should not have taken. And he is still better here. Queen b4 best move, rook e8 is just equal yeah okay uh i didn't have a win so hmm. yeah i didn't have a win and he was much better uh so let's see where i went wrong again so these Italian structures are tricky. Let's go back to the critical position after... Where is his c6 move? c6. So why is knight takes so good? Because pawn takes and I go d4. Okay. Yeah, I need to play d4 faster. I always seem to lay d4 off in these Italians for too long. And when this happened, where was my real mistake? Knight f5 is a mistake. So what was a better move? c4 stopping d5. Knight f3 is good. If I play c4 and stop d5. Yeah. So I guess so I guess my play was bad because I have to stop him from playing d5 and I shouldn't play d4 myself. As soon as I play knight f5, he is allowed to play d5 and after e d c d Rook d1 is a huge mistake. What? No. I pressed on somebody's profile who challenged me. How do I get... Ah! Okay. How do I get rid of this? Okay. Games. Analysis board. So where were we? Okay. So rook e2 is a mistake. Uh, and rook d1 is a mistake. Wait. No, rook e2 is a mistake. Okay. So here, again, c4. If I just stop his play, knight e7. Knight g3. Yeah. Okay, so I'm worse because I didn't play d4 on time and I allowed d5 when it was good for him. So one big lesson in the Italian is play d4 if you can play it. And if you are worse, you are going to have to be stopping... You're, you're going to have to be stopping d5 with c4. I can just go tempted with knight f5. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm happy that this game was better than yesterday's. I still played like rubbish because I was worse. But uh, in the end, in, it turned out okay. Uh, thank you for, much, for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. And bye-bye.